Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Fang Ping from Shenzhen Energy Company. We are the provider of power and gas, and also the service provider for the waste incineration and waste disposal. We are at Fortune 500 China company and the top 100 company in China. We, our business covers Africa and uh, Asia Pacific area. Those pictures are our incineration and power stations. We aim ourselves to be a competitive service prov provider, also the provider for clean energy. And uh, we want to provide the solution for the solid waste. And we also committed to social responsibility. Those pictures are showing the hydropower station, solar power station, and wind turbine. We are responsible for the, all the urban waste incineration in Shenzhen. We have eight incineration power station all over China. In Shenzhen, we have two incineration power stations in Shenzhen. Energy, our headquarters will be the office and located in the CBD area of Shenzhen. The area is 6, 000, around 6,000 square meter. It's a very strange port of land, so it's quite challenging for designers. For our requirements, we want to showcase our commission and features that is the stable and um, uh, classic and minimalism, and also showcase our idea for environmental protection because it is our office area, so it should be consistent with the context, and we also want to express our characters. For the functional, one third of the area will be served as the office, two thirds will be used as the rental area. We are going to attract the top companies to locate it, to, lo to land in our building. We want office area, common area, and a lounge area. And we want a good range, good sunshine, and a good window, as well as the green area inside of the building in order to strike a balance between the function of exhibition, training, meeting, and relaxing. Those two pictures are the meeting rooms and the relaxing area within the building. Technically speaking, we have the requirements for the environment. We want to use the nitro light, the nitro range to save the energy, and we don't want the radioactive material or pollutive material. We want the material are all green and low carbon emission in order to keep the warm and keep the cooling of the company and see and save the energy. We also want the other company could be a effective and uh, um, working area with human touches. Within this building, we have the staff canteen and the vertical garden and gyms or activity center amenities. We also have a food bridge connecting this building to a shopping mall near at the nearby. We have a multi-purpose function room within this building. Talking about the energy saving at the rooftop, we have solar panels to generate power and to offer the water heating system. We have we have the independent AC system, which is the pioneer for the for the same kind of building, which increase the efficiency of cooling 15%, and we use a new mechanism of cooling, which also increase the cooling efficiency 15%. We adapted the VAVAC system compared with the traditional system. The energy saving percentage point was 20%. And we're using the energy saving, water saving facilities, and we use the new, uh, the latest lighting system and the collection system of reinforce. 
for the awards we have been recognized by LEAD America. We also be recognized by Chinese authorities. And we have been awarded for the excellence of steel construction in Shenzhen. We are also been awarded by the city government. We have been awarded as the excellent project by Hong Kong, um, by Hong Kong organization. And we are applying more recognition and entitlement from Chinese government. And I would pass the floor to our designer. Thanks very much, Mr. Farming. Presented here today, and also um, thankful for our client for giving us the opportunity to, in fact, um, and be here as well. And as architects, we're incredibly privileged uh, to be a, a participant in giving form to the future, but also feel the, the burden of the incredible responsibility that we have to be good stewards of the various forces and relationships that we work with every day in our societies and, and the cities around us. And just as the different elements in nature have evolved according to the different specific conditions that we find in the world around them, and have inspired man uh, in, in various ways as well, we're also interested in understanding how the built form of the environment can evolve uh, to become a new species of sustainable architecture. And it's a large motivation in a lot of the, the work that we do to understand how the, the very geometries of uh, architecture can adapt and evolve over time. And in particular, with the typology of the skyscraper, it's something that has evolved to become an economical, efficient, and functional way of providing workspaces. And when we were presented the opportunity to do this project in Shenzhen, we asked ourselves, how can we further evolve the skyscraper so that it provides efficient and comfortable workspaces in a humid subtropical environment, but at the same time also reduces energy consumption. Uh, so Shenzhen, as, you, um, as I'm sure you know, it lies on the Tropic of Cancer, and as I just mentioned, has a humid subtropical environment. We're quite close to the equator, so the sun is, is high in the sky for most of the year, and for the most part travels in an east to west direction during the course of the day. Um, our building site, located in the Futian district, so in the, the central business district of Shenzhen, the Shenzhen Exhibition and Convention Center you see over to the west, and it's integrated into its environment and steps down from the high-rise towers to the north to the adjacent highway over to the south. And given the setting of the building massing, the sun practically moves from one side to the other. We're almost oriented completely along the north-south axis here. And in a typical facade on, on, say, a typical evening in June, the sun would come in from a southwest direction, and most of the heat gain would be managed through the technology of the glass itself and its various coatings. So what we proposed as a response is to take the facade, to manipulate it, to, to create, in a way, a kind of pleated facade where an opaque surface faces the main sun direction so that most of the heat gain is taken out of the equation while at the same time creating clear views in the other direction uh, for unmitigated views over to the, the center of the, the city of Shenzhen. And this logic of the pleated facade is kind of applied to the building massing. So in reality, it's a very, very efficient typical skyscraper where we've simply been working with manipulating the skin, which we then begin to prod, pull, and push to create openings in the main access in the corners of the building, a, a gentle pool in the middle that creates access to a generous green landscaped area to the west of the building and then higher up in the tower that also create the kind of various social hubs and spaces that we find in the building. This is the building as it's built um, today. And one of the, the things that we enjoy very much about this is that it has a very changing quality depending on where you experience the building. So if you move a little bit to the southwest, you see a completely opaque facade and the building expresses itself as a very kind of sculptural, almost mysterious object in the, in the skyline and moving from the southeast to an easterly direction and northeast, it moves from being opaque and sculptural to something that is much more transparent and glassy and almost begins to dematerialize in its context. And I, I think one of the other um, pleasures we've had in, in the project is that the pleated form of the facade, while relatively rigorous in plan, actually creates a very geometric and kind of sculptural element in the skyline, depending on how you experience the building. So on approach from the ground level, you see this gentle fold of the building to create uh, the opening. 
um, gentle kind of movement, unexpected circumstances as you move around it and experience the building from the entrances, from outside, moving to inside into the main lobby space. Uh, this is a view of some of the main circulation areas from the core where you come out into some of the social spaces of the buildings. In the office spaces, you can see that there are very, very clear views um, in the direction towards the city center. In some of the meeting spaces, some of the social spaces in the building where you really have generous double height uh, volumes. This is higher up at a, a sky lobby and club level. And also in the areas where the two facade systems and orientations come together to create unique circumstances and spaces that become different types of experiences that are within the same, within the same tower. Um, one of, the, one of the, the, the nice things about this project is also, and this is a rendering from 2009 when we submitted the competition. So at that time, this was really kind of uh, at the peak of rendering as an art form. So, so we're clearly very far from that today. And the built reality today, in, in no small part due to the commitment of the client to the project also, is a very, very kind of faithful uh, representation of the proposal almost uh, 10 years ago now. I was, uh, I was reminded this morning that we've been uh, working on this project. I think the other pleasure that we've had as architects in this project is really, uh, and, and something that was maybe a little bit unexpected to us, is really to also understand the influence of the building in the urban environment where the curvature of the building, when experienced especially from the low rise context of the south, really has an almost humanistic touch in how it steps down and breaks up the, the, the more rigorous and kind of geometric towers that sit to the north. Uh, so it has this kind of great uh, humanistic sculptural gentle element as it comes down and it really becomes a kind of transition between the glassy geometric towers to the north uh, to something that, that steps down both in terms of the massing but also in materiality, a transition from glass to more opaque and solid elements that take on much more of the kind of materiality of the low rise context. Um, so, so for us at least, coming back around, this, the Shenzhen Energy Center is at least one example of, of how we think architecture and its built form uh, can be manipulated and evolve uh, to become something that when thought through holistically begins to respond to the challenges and opportunities that we who have influence in the built environment face as we move forward into the future together. Um, and this is the, the team, thank you very much.